So Blackmagic Design just released DaVinci Resolve 18.5 and NAB. It's currently in the beta version, so use it with caution. But I wanted to make a really quick video showing you a really cool new Fusion feature that they just introduced. And that's a multi-merge node. If you're really familiar with programs that use layers instead of nodes, this tool is going to be super helpful. It combines the simplicity of layers with the power of nodes. So let's head over to Fusion and take a look at how we can actually use this node. Okay, inside of Fusion, I just have this basic Fusion setup. And this is pretty much the most common way to set this scene up. Uh, in the current version of DaVinci Resolve. Pretty much, I just have a mask node that's going into a color background node, as well as a glow node, and then that's being merged up on a background, and then I am just adding a bunch of these in with some text, some particles, and then some grain at the end to get the final result. And this all works out pretty good. We have all these different merge nodes that we can change the blending modes, the size, and all of that. Where it gets kind of annoying is, let's say I wanted to have this text go behind this blue circle here. Well, I would have to find the blue circle, and that's this one right here, and then I would have to drag this and put it before. But now it went below the yellow one as well as the green one. So I would have to find those ones, and then I would have to select these, drag them over, and it's only going to connect the one up, so I have to I have to merge it like that. And it just gets kind of messy, because you have to move all the stuff around and totally mess up your organization. That's where this new multi-merge node is going to come in. So if I delete all of these merge nodes, do shift space, and type in multi-merge node, I can press enter, and that's going to add this node in. Over in the inspector, you can see we have a layer list. And right now it's completely empty, because we don't have anything coming into the layer inputs. On the node itself, we have three inputs, just like a normal merge node. The first one is the background input, and that one's going to behave exactly the same as it would on your traditional merge node. The next one is this green input, which instead of being a foreground input like it is on a normal merge node, it is a layer input. So let's take this blue circle, and let's connect this up into the uh, layer input. Upon doing that, you can see this merge node is going to add in another input. And over in the inspector here, it's going to add a layer as well as a bunch of different controls that we can use. The pink triangle that it added is the second input, and that's essentially layer two. We also have this blue input, which is the mask input. And that's gonna behave just like it would on a normal merge node. It's gonna to apply to all of the different foreground inputs. So even if I have a ton of nodes plugged in here, it's gonna isolate all of them. Let's take all of our nodes and then just connect them up into this multi-merge node. And you can see it's gonna add a new input for each one. So that way we can connect another node. And you can combine as many nodes as you'd like. But right now I'm gonna put all of those in so I have six different layers and it's giving us exactly the same result as we had with all of those different merge nodes. The difference being now is I can come in here and find a certain layer. So layer one is gonna be this blue circle. I can click it and I can drag it all the way to the top. So now it's going to appear above our text. And that's the power of the multi-merge node. It puts it all in layer form, so just like in After Effects or another program, and allows us to easily move them around. But it's still a non-destructive workflow, so we can still go back to all of our nodes that come beforehand. To make our life a little bit easier, we can also label each one of these layers. So layer one is going to be this blue circle. So if I double click, I can label it, and I'm going to call this blue circle. And layer two is going to be the yellow circle. So I'm going to go through and label all of these. And now that I have them all labeled, you can see it's going to be a lot easier to move stuff around. So for example, I could take this yellow circle and move it above the text. So now it's going to appear above our text. And I also want the pink circle to be above too, because that way the glow is going to be cast onto the text. So it's super easy to rearrange these, and I can keep everything in my nodal graph exactly the same. Now, whatever layer I have selected, that's going to change the controls that are down here. Just like in your traditional merge node, you have the controls to change the center position, the size, the blending modes, and all sorts of stuff like that. And if I have my text selected and change the size, it's not going to affect any of the other nodes. If I switch over to, say, the pink circle, you can see it's going to have its own separate controls. Now, if you right-click on any of these layers, you have a couple of other options. We have stuff like set to default, which is going to change the name back to the default name. We also have the ability to set this entire layer back to default, so that is going to change all of the controls that are down here and set them back to their original size. And we can rename layers or do the go to connected tool to find which tool we have selected. And speaking of that, if we're inside of this multi-merge node and we have one of these layers selected, you can see it's going to highlight the node pipe that traces back to the node. So it makes it really easy to visualize where that one's coming from if you want to go back and make some sort of change. We also have the ability to animate this. So say I want the blue circle to go behind the text at frame 50. Well, if I jump to frame 49, I can add a keyframe and then jump one frame forward. And this time I'll drag the blue circle down below the text. So if we play this right at frame 50, it's going to switch where that node is. And that is so much easier than the way we would have had to do it using the traditional merge nodes, because we'd have to have two merge nodes and switch which one's visible. And it's just kind of a mess. 
If you want to remove the keyframes, simply right click off to the side here and then do remove multi-merge one layer order. In doing that, it removes all of the keyframes. And the last really cool feature is the ability to separate multi-merge nodes. If I right click on the pink circle and do a split here, it's going to take the pink circle and all the layers above it and move them to another multi-merge node. So you can see the first one here has all the ones below it and the second one has the pink circle in above. So it's a really easy way to separate it if you want to put something in between it or maybe apply some effects to only that merge node. So all in all, this node has a ton of potential, especially for making the transition from After Effects to Fusion a lot easier because it's a familiar workflow. But even for people who have been using Fusion for a long time, this is going to add a ton of quality of life features that really improve your workflow. The biggest issue that I see with it at this point is being able to stay organized. Looking at it on the node graph, it's hard to tell which one is layer one, which one's layer two, uh, with without actually clicking on the node and looking at it in the inspector. It's definitely going to take some playing around with just to get used to this new system, but I think it's going to be a really cool feature in the end. If you want me to cover some of the new Fusion features, let me know down in the comments below and make sure to stay subscribed so you get notified when those come out. I'm also working on a Fusion course that will dive into all of these cool nodes just like this one. If you want to be updated as to when that comes out, check out the link down below to sign up. But that's going to wrap up this video and I'll see you in the next one.